knocked out again. And for the next couple of years, it's the same thing. Everyone is saying Colts are never going to win one. And I did wonder why didn't it pan out the way I thought it would. But I determined that I had to have Christ first and that everything else came below that, including my own desires. The next year, that ended up being our year to, to go to the Super Bowl and win it. And it was a wonderful feeling. Every decision I make, I'm going to make it through the lens of Jesus Christ. And he got us to that ultimate victory. I'm Tony Dungy, and I am second. Great leaders aren't born. They're made. And not just anywhere. They're made in special places by special qualified trainers in places like the Academy of Creative Coaching. The Academy of Creative Coaching is an international certification program with courses in health and wellness coaching, spiritual coaching, relationship coaching, executive coaching, life coaching, and cultural competency coaching. Courses are online, hybrid, or face-to-face. -face. The Academy of Creative Coaching is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make a positive change in yourself and the world. Go to academyofcreativecoaching.com. I hate, hate religion. religion. Pretty shocking to hear coming from a pastor, huh? I'm Jasper, this is my wife, Alicia Williams. We would absolutely love to have you come and take a visit. At the church. We're strictly about relationships. It's about deepening your walk, walk with, with God. God. 48, 45 South Old Peachtree Road, North Cross, Georgia. Or you can hit us online at www.thechurchinfo.org. Remember, at the church, it's about relationship, not religion. I am an American soldier. I'm a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always raise this first. I will never accept defeat. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined. I am disciplined. Physically and mentally tough. Trained and proficient in my warrior tasks and drills. I'm an expert and I'm a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the, the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. They're strong and there's Army strong. See what it takes at GoArmy.com. All right, welcome back to the Live Exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela, and today we are talking about yoga and wealth and having it all. <laughs> so we're going to clarify exactly what all of that means um, right now. So today I have on the show Dr. Roshana Novellis. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Wow. Oh, yay. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Great to have you. You look awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I might have to imitate that hair color. I love the color. I love it. Love it. It's perfect for summer. So I would love to know. I mean, now I have all of the textbook information, and I'll just kind of read some of your credentials. But um, Dr. Roshana has a Doctor of Science in Engineering, um, Systems Engineering, with a minor in Finance from George Washington University. She has a Master's in Information Technology, which emphasizes Information Systems Engineering. And then she has a Bachelor's in Business Management Economics and a Bachelor in Science in Computer Engineering. So you were a d double major. I was. And she was quite the scholar, achieving summa cum laude in each of these majors. So she is also a federally licensed a federally licensed as an enrolled agent to represent taxpayers in the front of the IRS and also have passed has passed the seven se se series seven exam. Um, so she is quite accomplished and it looks like I mean just from judging the way you look you're accomplished very early in life. Um, that you didn't waste any time, <laughs> but um, either she looks really good or she's really young. <laughs> so I get it too. I get it all the time. People try to guess, you know, well, how old are you to be a doctor? You know, so I, I get it. So I would love to hear um, what it is that you do and how you have managed to combine yoga with what you do. Yeah, so I focus on helping entrepreneurs multiply their wealth. 
And when I was in corporate America, I realized that people were unhappy, even if they made a lot of money. And they were unhappy because they didn't take their health seriously. They didn't know how to be more harmonious in their lives. And they really didn't know how to have a relationship with their money so that their money Mm -hmm. could actually help them actualize their dreams and their goals. So what I've done is create a variety of programs that are found on at the wealthy yogi.com that integrate mindfulness practice, financial strategy and technology. I okay. No, that's great. I'm just wowed. <laughs> I love it because what you've done is you've taken um, you know, kind of what we call the hard sciences, we're looking at engineering and that kind of thing, and then you've kind of blended it with, you know, more of um, human development, and and I really love that. Is what was it? You said that you're working with um, people in corporate America who weren't happy, and what at what point did it trigger that I need to marry these two very different fields? Well, actually, it was a bit later in life. I started studying mindfulness practice myself when I was 27. Okay. However, it was compartmentalized. So in 2014, I decided I needed to take fitness and mindfulness to be my number one priority. At that time, I decided it was time for me to take a sabbatical and travel to Thailand for six weeks. So during that period of time, I stayed at an ashram. I I studied um, ancient yogic principles, learned Sanskrit, um, meditated a lot. And when I first got there, I was upset. (laughs) I had vision this utopia, and it wasn't what I expected. I thought it was going to be hardcore yoga, and I would come back looking like a fitness model. But it was more of the meditative side. Okay. And um, and we learned how to be more conscious and more mindful. And there was one other girl there that had a similar personality um, to me. She was from Singapore. And we were like, how are we going to get through this training? And we decided we had to wake up at 4.30 every morning and teach each other fitness classes. So we wow. alternating, trying to come up with the hardest fitness class that we could, <laughs> could uh, teach. And through that, I learned that we all have the resources that we need in our lives to make us happy. And that's even if we're in the mountains of Thailand, with no, we had no hot water, no okay. heat. But I, we still found a way to make ourselves happy. And when I was there, I had this huge aha moment that no matter what we have, no matter what where we are, we can look inside to figure out what we need to get to this place of calm. And at that point, I decided that being mindful applies to everything in life, including finances. And that's where the wealthy yogi came from. Oh, my gosh. I think I'm going to need her in my life. (laughs) No, that is amazing because, you know, you would think that, you know, in the in the most in the most comfortable situations, you know, you're oh, it just sounds so romantic. I'm going to Thailand for six weeks and I'm going to have this amazing experience. But you figured out. Once you got there, it wasn't quite that, and how to make it what it needed to be for you to get what you needed out of it. Right. That's- and we all can apply that no matter where we are in life. Like, no one has a life that's their ideal, right? right. <laughs> but they can, like, take a step back, look at their lives, and say, how can I make changes so that I have the most happiness, so that I feel the most wealthy? And that's what I help people do. Wow. So how do you see people's lives transforming? I mean, maybe even if you have an example or just kind of have a general idea of what happens when you first get your hands on them and and then how what's, what happens sort of after you've worked with them for a while. So generally people are overworked, overstressed, and they feel like they're behind, right? Okay. So they're just not happy. And so when we go through, I start people off with this wealthy yogi assessment wheel where they have to rate where they are in like the relationships, their finances and civic duty and all these core elements of their lives. And when they're actually able to know where they are now and then where they need to go, they can make small changes so that they uh, reach their destination. And once people make the small changes, they're much more relieved, much more relaxed, and they're able to enjoy their lives more. 
Wow. Just that so you are seeing those results. Yes, you got that. Definitely. is absolutely amazing. Um, okay, well, we're, we're going to go to break. I hope that this has been enough to let you know that you really want to listen to this show today. This is going to be some great information. When we come back, we're going to look at some trending topics, and then we're going to get back into this conversation about yoga and wealth. Stay tuned. Great leaders aren't born. They're made, and not just anywhere. They're made in special places by special qualified trainers in places like the Academy of Creative Coaching. The Academy of Creative Coaching is an international certification program with courses in health and wellness coaching, spiritual coaching, relationship coaching, executive coaching, life coaching, and cultural competency coaching. Courses are online, hybrid, or face-to-face. -face. The Academy of Creative Coaching is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make a positive change in yourself and the world. Go to academyofcreativecoaching.com. JBT 700 Miami Circle 30324. It's not a chain, it's a chain reaction. Invest $49 a month at a real gym. For more info, go to facebook.com forward slash jeans body tech. Thanks for asking, but I'd rather not send you nude pictures. I'm camera shy. I already said no. Under my clothes, I'm a robot. My webcam is broken. I'm worried they'll get passed around school. I have a rash. I have nudophobia. I have lizard skin. I'm a vampire, so I don't show up in pictures anyways. Your badgering has really killed the mood. When someone is pressuring you to do something you don't want to, how many ways can you say no before they get the message? Let us know at that'snotcool.com. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Primary list. Lack of diversity. Gas prices. Michael Jackson. Trending topics. All right, welcome back to the Live Exchange. So what is trending right now? Now, you know, we've got quite a bit going on, and um, one of which right now is, um, well, I, I, at first, actually, I really want to, there's a bunch, so I'm, I'm going to save a little bit for later, but I'm going to tell you right now, University of Texas in that um, affirmative action case that just came through, um, they just made a decision on it, and what they've decided is that um, the affirmative action program at the University of Texas is being upheld and meaning that they're going to go ahead and stick with it. Um, this was first brought to um, the Supreme Court. Abigail Fisher was a student who did not get accepted to the university and she said it was because she was a white student and or white applicant and that other black students who didn't qualify got in before her or instead of her. So what's interesting is that um, what they're saying and particularly um, Justice Kennedy who was usually very much against affirmative action uh, or has been cr critical of it I should say um, he was the swing vote and he actually voted for it to be upheld and his rationale was there is nothing unconstitutional about wanting to maintain a diverse campus and that that is a reasonable expectation for a college so I think you know and my, my background is higher ed and so for me I think wow that is huge um, but one of the things that made that a little bit more possible is the fact that we have two justices who would have voted more on the conservative side are not there. Scalia, as we know, has passed away, and Kagan recused himself from the uh, from you know from voting. So um, very interesting how things are um, changed just by a couple of minor. I don't know if we can call it minor. But <laughs> so I, it's any any thoughts about that? I know I just kind of went on and on. <laughs> well, inclusivity is important throughout education and not only learning from others that are different races, but have just different backgrounds, different experiences, all enriches everyone. So I'm yeah. all for inclusivity no matter what. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. All right. Well, we're going to go to break and we come back. We're going to get a little bit more into our topic on the live exchange. Welcome back to the Live Exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela. I have with me here today Dr. Roshana Novellis, and she is the wealthy yogi. And I'm um, really intrigued by how she has combined mindfulness with science and money and finances and, and all of that, um, because those are the areas that I have 
uh, really try to stay away from anything financial, anything engineering based. And um, but I love the whole mindfulness side. So to me, it's it's a great marriage <laughs> of of the two. And so what she was telling us earlier was that um, she noticed that there were people who were not happy in their you know they may have been wealthy but they weren't happy. And so she found a way to um, work with people in in corp in the corporate world to try to get them to a place of happiness. So I have a question. Um, one of the things, and I have to ask you about Donald Trump, <laughs> only because, um, you know, he is obviously wealthy, and I, I wonder, and I've had this conversation with um, a couple of friends of mine just actually last week, is he happy? And when I, you know, the vibe that I get from him is not one of happiness or one of peace. And I'm just wondering, have you ever considered that and, and what your assessment from afar, in all fairness, may be of, of somebody like him? Well, most of us in the Western world are more comfortable living from a place of fear and mm. making decisions from a place of fear versus a place of love. Wow. So I feel that if all politicians, all police officers, all teachers were compassionate and were able to tap into their love, they wouldn't do some of the things or say some of the things that they're saying. Mm -hmm. However, because fear is what drives people, that is what he's doing. And he's a smart enough person to know that to employ that strategy. Yeah. I don't necessarily believe that he believes everything that he's saying, but he knows that if you can drum up the fear in people that they'll take action. And it's it's really about the bottom line. It's not about what I say and the truth of it or the validity of it, it's, is it going to get to where I need to get? Yes. So. Yes. It's harder to be loving. <sighs> yes. It is. That's a hashtag, y'all. <laughs> it's harder to be loving. It is. Yes. It is. Because it takes a lot of, uh, you know, when, when, when you get hits and, you know, it's so much easier to lash out than it is to just relax, calm down, and respond with, you know, a level, a level head. You know, and it takes longer to do that, too. <laughs> so, um, well, I, I, and one of the things that, you know, there are a lot of people who are big fans of, of his style. So when you go into the corporate world, I was in the corporate world for about six months. <laughs> My first job out of graduation, um, I was a PR um, coordinator for a, a corporate, uh, a universal p um, pictures really. And we were in the big corporate building in LA and everything. Um, I lasted six months. Um, the world just didn't feel like it was a good fit for me. I got into education after that, but one of the things, and this is also the case in education, I did not realize, but we have, um, there's still a very corporate feel in the world of education and higher education in particular. Um, when you work with leaders, who have a style, let's say, like Donald Trump, or a style that's very bottom line, what kind of strategies do you use to, you know, and I don't know, maybe there's nothing wrong with that, but are there strategies that you use to, uh, to try to get them to be more loving? <laughs> uh, more loving, that's, that's difficult. Uh, I think it, he is transparent in what drives him. Mm -hmm. And uh, when people are transparent, they're the easiest leaders to uh, buddy up to and kind of figure out how you can work with. Yeah. When people are more vague, they're more, you have to have a more difficult uh, strategy. But to be more loving, that is an internal decision. No one can force anybody to do that. Right. So, yeah. And he may be in his private life. We don't know. According to his wife and his children, he he is extremely loving, um, and so and again, like I said, it's it's kind of hard to make an assessment from afar, not having sat down or had a personal conversation. So you know, so it may be unfair to even try to make that assessment. Right. But I know. Go ahead. And in in the corporate world or business world, people respect power over anything else. So if you right. can seem powerful, and you could do that in many different ways, but if you can emote power wherever you are, that's when people are drawn to you. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that is, um, that, that's interesting. And we're going to come back to that. But first, we're going to go into what the research says. In the interest of science, 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 science. Science, 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 science. All right, so there is a theory that I, you know, that I really like to 
point out because um, I think sometimes when we are, you know, feeling overwhelmed or we're feeling defeated, there's a theory that I always like to go back to, whether it is for myself, whether it is for um, people that I'm working with, um, and it's called self-determination theory. And this theory was developed by um, Ryan and Desi in 2001. And the theory basically says that there are three psychological needs that we all have and, um, in, and, and that have to be maintained in order for us to be um, motivated, to maintain motivation. And so um, the first is, well, there, I'll just tell you the three, is competence, autonomy, and relatedness. So competence is, is basically that idea that I know that I can do it. I have this idea that whatever it is I have my eyes set on, I can do it. I can accomplish that. Um, the next is autonomy, and autonomy means that there's nobody holding you back. There's nothing constraining you. You have the freedom to move in the direction that you're aspiring to move in. So there's nothing really holding you back. And then the last one is relatedness, which I equate to love. That means you have people in your life who are there with you, who care about you, who are supporting you. Um, when we hear all these great stories of people who made it through college or they overcame a really tough obstacle, they always cite somebody who was there for them or had their back. And even if it was just one person, um, that made a significant difference. So those three together work um, to, to create a self-motivated person. Um, with the absence of one of those three, self-motivation diminishes. So I, am, I really would like to talk about that with, um, from the standpoint of mindfulness. So when we get back, because I, I just wonder if, if that fits in or if that's a piece that, that may need to be added. Um, so when we get back, we're going to talk about that a little bit. That's our theory. Um, and uh, we'll be right back on the live exchange. You want to see who's in the network? Don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. Follow us on Instagram at Sensation Station Network. We're the nation's urban station. Radio, not dumb down. I hate religion. Pretty shocking to hear coming from a pastor, huh? I'm Jasper. This is my wife, Alicia Williams. We would absolutely love to have you come and take a visit. At the church, we're strictly about relationships. It's about deepening your walk, walk with, with God. 4845 South Old Peachtree Road, Norcross, Georgia. Or you can hit us online at www.thechurchinfo.org. Remember, at the church, it's about relationship, not religion. Hey, parents, finding it hard to communicate with kids in today's world of ever-changing slang? Hi, son. Excuse me? Introducing the Communicizer. Just strap non-toxic Communicizer to your mouth and go from boring old man speak Oh, you know, I'm here if you want to talk. To 100% off the chain. Text me whenever, yo. It's that easy. Thanks to Communicizer, I'm relevant to my kids again. I mean... I'll fly, boo. And now when you buy Communicizer, you get the auto-tune attachment free. Sounds so hip-hop, your kids will want to talk to you for hours. I used to have to walk three miles uphill to school every morning short day. I love you, Dad. I love you too, son. Communicizer is not available in stores because it doesn't exist. But that's okay. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Because kids in foster care don't need perfection. They need you. For more information on how you can adopt, go to adoptuskids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Adopt Us Kids and the Ad Council. Now, 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 now. Well, you'll see what happens. Sensation Station Network. All right, welcome back to the live exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela, and here with me today is Dr. Rashana Novellis, and she is our our resident expert for today. She is known as the wealthy yogi. And um, what I just talked about in um, the research was uh, self determination theory, and that there's basically three components to it: autonomy, relatedness, and uh, competence. <laughs> I always I always miss the third, and um, and I really. I'm interested in finding out how that might um, connect with mindfulness. And, I mean, self-determination is one thing. We can be determined to do something. But does that always equate to peace and happiness? So self-determination and mindfulness can go hand in hand. You just have to know what you, are, what you want and be intentional about what you're getting. So as long as you have intentionality, you're being mindful mm -hmm. and not being caught up in living in the future or living in the past. Oh, so wow. right now, we're here together talking about these awesome topics, and we can have an intention to share about the importance of self-determination and these three components, and that's wonderful, right? right? 
And when we give ourselves the freedom to look at ourselves and kind of rate ourselves in these three categories, we're we're better able to make shifts or changes in our lives so that we can enhance our self-determination. Right. But you have to be determined to be mindful. It's really difficult. Yeah. It's really easy to be distracted by life and friends ah. and social media and, and everything. So it's really, you have to be determined to be in the present moment and to really experience everything in life. So, yes. How how do you get back on track when you feel, or even when you feel yourself kind of slipping from the mindfulness realm, how do you get back? The best strategy is to be gentle and compassionate with yourself. Like if you mm. are in trouble or are mean to yourself, that's not the approach. So the approach is to listen like, oh, okay, I wanted to dream about this. And you can imagine a thought, like it's on a boat in a river just drifting by the stress. You see it. Goodbye. Goodbye thought. <laughs> Goodbye stress. It. And then you come back to what you're doing right now mm-hmm. and then approach it with the same compassion and the same intention that you had previously. It happens. It's impossible for us to always just be focused unless you're a monk. You know? <laughs> it's impossible for any of us. So don't uh, judge yourself or, you know, be upset with yourself for not being able to stay in the present moment as much as you would like. Right. Oh, wow. I love it. I love it because, um, and I think, you know, what just occurred to me is that relatedness kind of goes hand in hand with that because if you have people around you who are harsh to you and who are, who give you a hard time, it's going to be really hard for you to be easy on yourself. Yes. So it's, yes. I think it's important to kind of think about who are the people around you. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I remember when um, someone was telling me that if you're type A and you like fitness, to be more balanced, you have to take do gentle workouts and mm. do slow workouts because that's the opposite of your natural personality. So the same is vice versa. So you can't be type A hardcore all the time, huh. right? Wow, <laughs> that's a good point. And, it, and it, for me, it feels weird sometimes to just be slow, but it helps so much. And then you're able to be refreshed and reset and then to go back out and resume your intentions. I love it. I love it. Well, that means, because I'm usually really nice, so I do hardcore workouts, so it sounds like I'm on track. Yes, sounds with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we're going to go into this week's balance challenge. Keeping your balance with Dr. Pamela. Dr. Pamela. Dr. Pamela. All right, so this week's balance challenge, I mean, it has to be yoga related. <laughs> um, and so, and, and just based on what we were just talking about, my challenge to you is to find ways this week to make sure that you are focused on the present, that you're not allowing yourself to drift too far into the future, too far into the past, um, and allowing those things to, you know, cause stress, but that you're able to find moments where specifically where you are motivated to be in the present and to relish the present and all that's happening in the present. Now to do that, you might need to make sure that the people around you are gentle and are not um, those who are, you know, very critical. Um, When you find yourself slipping, be intentional about about how to bring yourself back to the present. Uh, and I'm going to let the, the expert here add to that. If there's anything that you have to add to that, I have two simple ways that you can do this. My favorite way is sound meditation. So you can do this if you live in a downtown or if you live, you know, in the countryside. Listen to the sound of a bird or any noise that passes by, and focus on that sound until you cannot hear it anymore. If you do that, you're in the present moment. Wow. The second way to easily do that is walking meditation. So what you do is focus on each part of your foot and how it touches the ground. So walk slowly and you can feel the heel to the middle of your foot, to the ball of your foot, to your toes releasing. And if you focus on that, you're in the present moment and you're actually enjoying what you're doing right then and there. So those are my two quick, easy ways to do mindfulness and meditation. Wow. I mean, I thought when you were going to say walk, you know, walk around and look around and take, but you're talking about bring it in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Well, that is your balance for this week. I really want you to be focused on, um, what is going on in the presence and, and not be all over the place. I know that's hard, but try it for a week. See what happens. Report back. I want to know. We'll be right back with the live exchange. Great leaders aren't born. 
They're made, and not just anywhere. They're made in special places by special qualified trainers in places like the Academy of Creative Coaching. The Academy of Creative Coaching is an international certification program with courses in health and wellness coaching, spiritual coaching, relationship coaching, executive coaching, life coaching, and cultural competency coaching. Courses are online, hybrid, or face-to-face. -face. The Academy of Creative Coaching is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make a positive change in yourself and the world. Go to academyofcreativecoaching.com. Coming to Tampa Bay, I said we want to win the Super Bowl, and I believe we will. From IamSecond.com, we came close but never really did win that championship. Former NFL head coach Tony Dungy. At the end of my sixth year, I was fired, and it was one of the biggest disappointments of my life. Next year, I'm in Indianapolis, get to the playoffs, but get knocked out again. And for the next couple of years, it's the same thing. Everyone is saying Colts are never going to win one. And I did wonder why didn't it pan out the way I thought it would. But I determined that I had to have Christ first and that everything else came below that, including my own desires. The next year, that ended up being our year to, to go to the Super Bowl and win it. And it was a wonderful feeling. Every decision I make, I'm going to make it through the lens of Jesus Christ. And he got us to that ultimate victory. I'm Tony Dungy, and I am second. All right, welcome back to the Live Exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela, and I have here with me today Dr. Roshana Novellis. And we are talking about the... The, the cross between <laughs> uh, finances and yoga and just really being able to have a life of peace and love. And um, I want to give the numbers. So you all, if you have any questions, this is the time, um, you know, because any other time she's going to charge you her consultant fee. So if you have a question, <laughs> you better call in now. But the number is 678-613-5857. That is 678-613. 613-5857. If you are not at peace with your job, with your career, even if you're highly successful and you, you got there and now you're wondering, why am I not happy? Um, that, this show is definitely for you today. Um, so I, you know, I know that you know, during the break we were talking about um, the, the worst entrepreneurial moment, and I'm curious to learn about that. Um, but I also would be interested in, in just... I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions about just being an entrepreneur. Uh, but first, let's talk about that worst moment. So the worst moment was when a bad referral turned into a bad business partnership. Uh -oh. So one of my oldest friends who I've known since junior high school, we actually attended junior high, high school, and college together, told me she had the perfect business partner for me. Uh -oh. She said, the two of you are the hardest people, hardest working people that I've ever met. She has a Harvard PhD. She's very sociable. And she already has a revenue producing business and all she needs is a partner. Wow. So I think the two of you would do well together. So we went through about six months of courting each other. And then I decided, hey, I'm going to go all in. So I quit my consulting job that was based in the D.C. I sold my row home in Capitol Hill, which was profitable and not only paying for the house in D.C., it was also paying for my house here in Atlanta. Oh, gosh. And I moved to Miami to run this business with this individual. Wow. And then when I got there, I started noticing all the cracks in the foundation. Uh-oh. My first order of business was to make sure we had employee operating manuals so that we can expand. So I started having interviews with all the employees, and they told me they made up financials. They didn't know who the clients were in the client database, and I was devastated. Oh, my goodness. But I said, hey, I'm hardworking. I can turn this around. We still have some good uh, elements going on with us for this business. Until she asked me to co-sign on a new uh, business office, she wanted to move and expand her offices. And I'm thinking, if the business is making so much money, why would I need to put up my personal uh, credit to get into new offices? You've already sacrificed so much to this point, it sounds like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then I said, hey, I, I had to speak to my mother, business coaches, all these people who told me, hey, just because you work so hard to get here doesn't mean you have to stay. Mm. It's that sunk That's a cost good. fallacy. Yeah. And at that point, I decided, hey, I'm going to start over. I bought a one-way ticket from Miami back <laughs> to Atlanta. Wow. 
Wow. And then I started my financial consulting firm three weeks later. And that experience was, it was so hard for me because I had put, I, I made so many changes in my life. I right. put so much money and effort and energy into this business partnership. But it taught me how to, uh, that you don't have to stay put, right? Mm. If something's not working for you, you don't have to stay there. You wow. can keep moving. So. Yeah. That's that's what happened. That's it's horrible. Huge. <laughs> I mean, that's huge because a lot of times our pride will step in and say, you know, no, I like you had first said, I can turn this around. I can turn this around. And some people kind of stay in that as they are spiraling downward and, you know, don't realize it until they hit the ground. Right. Um, and that's one of the reasons I want to teach people how to be mindful entrepreneurs, because part of entrepreneurship is dealing with the ebbs and flows. But mm -hmm. part of it is being realistic, looking at financials, looking at trends and taking the hardcore logical advice and wow. making a shift or a change or exiting a business. Sometimes we have to do that. Doesn't mean we are failures as entrepreneurs. You know, and I love that because there are people, There are, there's this quote out there that's often said, you know, failure's not an option. Failure's not an option. And I guess it depends on how you define failure. But in my mind, sometimes failure is the way that we learn and, and the way that we grow and the way that we bounce back. Right. But I'd, I'd love to hear your take on that. Yeah, failure is just quitting completely. So if you say, hey, this business venture or this line of work or this product isn't working in the marketplace, the smartest thing to do is to pivot and go into another direction. It's failure if you just say, hey, I'm going to sit at home and sulk and not do anything else ever again. That's failure. Okay. But most companies, especially in Silicon Valley, that have made buku money, they've had to pivot. Or all of the C-suites have had experience where a, a company has failed. Yeah. And actually investors look for that, look for that tenacity, look for that mm. ability to keep going in seeking for founders that they know will be able to lead a successful business. So actually, hmm. it's a positive thing. Wow, I yes. love that. And I love <laughs> the use of, of pivot, you know, because it's not, it's, it's not over. Right. Until you decide to sit on the couch and do nothing. Right. So, <laughs> and actually, you know... No, no, no. I'm just, I was going to say, that sounds kind of nice, too. But that's, again, a choice. If you want to have a different life, then you can, but that's still pivoting. Correct. You don't quit until it's, you know, right. it's over. But, okay, we're going to be back. Uh, stay tuned, and uh, we have much more coming for you in the live exchange. Okay, so just type the job website address here. That's it. Then you enter what job you're looking for there. Electrician. This is Peter. Recently, he got help going on the internet for the first time to look for a new job. Okay. Then you just hit search and... In the past, Peter's gotten work from people he knew, but he heard there were more jobs online. There we go. These are all for me? Uh-huh. Really? He had no idea just how many. I can't believe it. This one looks good. Peter is thinking the internet might be for him after all. And this is just one website. Wow. Why didn't I do this sooner? See what the internet can help you do at everyoneon.org or call 1-855-387-9166 to find a free training class near you. Brought to you by Connect to Compete and the Ad Council. It takes 12 years to create a graduate. It takes about the same time to create a dropout. And at the end of the day, the difference between a child becoming one or the other could be you. So United Way is asking you to make a pledge. Tutor a child who needs help. Mentor a kid who needs someone on their side. Volunteer to read to children. Because when a child advances, we all advance. Be a reader. Tutor or mentor. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Take the pledge now at liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Great leaders aren't born. They're made, and not just anywhere. They're made in special places by special qualified trainers in places like the Academy of Creative Coaching. The Academy of Creative Coaching is an international certification program with courses in health and wellness coaching, spiritual coaching, relationship coaching, executive coaching, life coaching, and cultural competency coaching. Courses are online, hybrid, or face-to-face. -face. The Academy of Creative Coaching is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make a positive change in yourself and the world. Go to academyofcreativecoaching.com. If you're looking for that ratchet, you're in the wrong place. It's the nation's urban internet station, Sensation Station Network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
All right, welcome back to the live exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela, and we are talking about wealth and yoga. And I have here with me today Dr. Roshana Novellis, and she's talking about oh, some of the things that she's doing. Um, and really what her whole world has become, I'm assuming, it has to have become your whole, um, whole world to combine this this yoga with finance. And I want to talk a little bit more about how those two work together. But she also just told us about her worst entrepreneurial experience, which basically comes down to just really a bad partnership. And I'm curious to know, um, especially for those of us who are moving into partnerships with people, I've had some experiences myself, um, are there anything... Is there anything in hindsight that you looked at and, and thought, you know, now I can see that, that this might have been a red flag? So number one, using third-party uh, attorneys, CPAs, all of those kind of individuals. I actually relied on the people that she had. I'm like, oh, they're smart. And I'm like, I'm smart enough to review all these these documents myself. So mm-hmm. um, there was an ego, a bit of ego in that <laughs> regard. <laughs> But after it, when I was deciding whether I wanted to exit the business, at that point, I did consult my own counsel. And they're like, this is horrible. There's so many holes. So that's the main thing is to consult people who have an expertise in the area that you're you're seeking. So the the legal expertise, the financial expertise, and even a business coach Mm -hmm. um, to make sure that everything's on the up and up. Because I had one individual who informed me saying, like, no business owner who is making that much money would have given you that much of an equity stake for what you put in. Wow. Like, that just doesn't make sense. And I'm just thinking, I'm getting a good deal. And they're like, no, that just didn't make sense. Oh. You know? Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. really? Okay. <laughs> so you would have known that just it had you consulted with somebody ahead right. of time. And paid, yeah, pay people. Yeah. You, you, yeah. We all have friends that we can call real quick right. for a quick question. <laughs> yeah. Do not do that. <laughs> pay people for their expertise yes. and advice. And, and pay for a thorough review of all contracts prior to signing anything. Right, yeah. right. So those of you who want to call in 678-613-5857 with a question, um, this is not a consulting thing. <laughs> so if you have specific questions about your business, it's cool to call and ask about it, but you still want to go hire a professional yes. to, to really get um, to the bottom of whatever it is that you you know you need to deal with with your business. Uh, but we do encourage you to give us a call, 678 678- Six one three five eight five seven. Um, but I, I I ask the hindsight question because I always like to pull lessons out of you know my experiences. Um, but with regards to mindfulness, you know how how is there a rule about how often you look back at the past to learn from those things and as opposed to staying present? You know, how does that work? <clears throat> it's funny that you ask because now when I look back, it doesn't affect me. Hmm. And when we're going through hard times, we kind of feel like life is going to stay this way forever. Yeah. But it's not. Everything changes, whether it's the happy times or the sad times or the stressed out times. So we can keep that in mind to know that nothing lasts. Then Mm -hmm. we're able to be more mindful. Okay. Right? So if our relationship ends, if someone breaks into our car or whatever, we're like, okay, I'm upset now. (laughs) But this is not going to take over my life. So that is the point. So, yeah, be more mindful. And, and when you look back, you can see how you could have integrated that more into your life and how you can do that moving forward easier. So looking back is not necessarily a problem in and of itself. When does looking back become a problem? When you live there. Okay. You can't live in the past. <laughs> right. The only moment we have to live in is now. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong from learning from experience. Right. Yeah. And planning for the future. Mm -hmm. But once you learn and once you plan, all you have to do is execute and execution happens now. That's in the now. Yes. I love it. I love it. And, you know, and, you know, my issue isn't so much living in the past. It's um, living in the future. So my head is always about 20 years ahead. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, Well, as I get older. I pull back a little bit. It might be about five years ahead now, but but um, but that's my biggest thing is is being so futuristic and always planning for the future. And I remember being in college and driving up and down the hills of Bel Air mm-hmm. um, in L.A., thinking this is going to be my life. This is going to be my life. Um, and I and I still kind of do that thing. <laughs> it hasn't become my life yet. So I, w- to what extent is the future, I guess, when you live there. I don't know if that's the same answer, but that becomes too much of an obsession. So strategy is important. So that's the third step of my uh, five-step money multiplier system. So you have to have a strategy. So I recommend having a five-year plan and a 90-day plan, right? Mm, So once you have those plans, 
you just have to execute and live towards the plan. Do not change your plan every week, yeah. every month, right? <laughs> yeah. So you know what the big picture is. You know what you can do in the short term. Mm-hmm. And what you do every day when it's your time to work, whether that's five hours a day, 12 hours a day, you're just doing what you need to do to execute that plan so that you can actualize your goals. Right. Yeah. So again, it's it's about being in the now So you so because ex, execution happens in the now. That's right. When it, so yeah. I'm definitely a planner. And of mm-hmm. course, I was the same way, you know, when I finished my two degrees in three years because I wanted to study wow. abroad my senior year of undergrad. Nice. Like, I had a strict plan, but I was stressed because I always <laughs> lived in the future. Like, yeah. can I do these 25 credits a semester? Mm-hmm. And I was able to do that, but I was stressed out. So when wow. I was able to reduce the stress, then I became, it was able to enjoy life and enjoy what I'd accomplished more. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, we're going to move into love notes, and uh, hopefully we'll have some great be able to help somebody out today. Love notes with Dr. Pamela. Um, so this love note um, came in this week, and it is um, from a woman. I'll really just summarize it because it's pretty long. But it's from a woman who's had a really hard time. Um, she's not in the 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 one of the things that we're talking about this week is can we have it all? And and she feels like she doesn't have. Um, she's been striving to have it all, and she's kind of drowning in finances. She's drowning in situations with her ex. She's drowning. It seems like in every category there is something going on that's that's making her life unpleasant, that she's nowhere near having it all. She's nowhere near being happy and at peace. And when you are in, when you're drowning in that kind of predicament, and, um, you know, some of us, and I'll just, you know, some of us may have um, where we don't, I don't know, it, it, it's just a bad week. But when somebody is kind of stuck in a bad era, a bad decade, how can somebody who is that deep in, it sounds like she's that deep in, pull out of that? Is that something they can do by themselves? Or is that something that needs to, you know, do they need a community? What's the best way to pull out of that? I think some of us need help sometimes to talk to a therapist or talk to a spiritual advisor. But also we can all take some time to be alone, right? Mm. And during that alone time, we do our self-reflection. Where we are, where are we today, and where do we want to go, and what can we change to get there? And sometimes we need a week. Sometimes we need even longer. I usually like to do a two-week silent retreat every year. Oh, nice! Where I go into the mountains of California, Marin County, and we just Ooh. meditate for two weeks. We're not allowed to bring books or even a journal. Wow! You just have to be in the present moment. And usually after that, like. But the changes that I need to make in my life are immediately clear. Wow. So for people who don't have that luxury, maybe it's just a couple hours driving out to a lake nearby mm-hmm. or just hanging out at the park for an afternoon alone and trying to figure out what changes you can make in your life. That's really great. But, you know, not everyone can do all this on their own. So it's great to have that community or the advisor or counselor that can lead you to the, the path. Yeah, I mean, and I and I have a couple of questions. I hope this helps you out, but um, I have a couple of questions related to that that we, you know, we can ask um, after the break. But what, one of the things I really want to touch on um, is when people don't want to be by themselves. They don't want to be alone. They don't like themselves. They don't want to be with themselves, um, and how how they can overcome that as well. So we're, we're going to look at that when we come back. Uh, stay tuned on the live exchange. Great leaders aren't born, they're made, and not just anywhere. They're made in special places by special qualified trainers in places like the Academy of Creative Coaching. The Academy of Creative Coaching is an international certification program with courses in health and wellness coaching, spiritual coaching, relationship coaching, executive coaching, life coaching, and cultural competency coaching. Courses are online, hybrid, or face-to-face. The Academy of Creative Coaching is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make a positive change in yourself and the world. Go to academyofcreativecoaching.com. All right, welcome back to the live exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela, and I have here at my side Dr. Rishana Novellis, and um, she is the wealthy yogi. And um, I really love, I, I really, I don't know what I expected, <laughs> but, you know, this is right down my alley, and I'm just, I'm really loving this. Um, even her vibe has just got me like, you know, which is great. <laughs> I needed that today. So I, um, one of the things we were, we just got, um, I just talked about a letter that we received 
from somebody who feels like she's just kind of entrenched in this rut, I guess, that's just been going on financially, dealing with exes, um, just, just really not being able to get a grip on um, peace in her life. Um, one of the things that um, Dr. Roshana just re recommended is finding a place, finding those opportunities to have alone time. Um, and I'm just curious to know for, and I know people who really just don't want to be by themselves. They just, they loathe that. How, how, is this a strategy for them as well? I think it's a strategy for everyone. A lot of people who don't want to be alone just want someone else to kind of distract them from mm. their own lives. And we right. all have to be present in our own life for some period of time. Yeah. Right. So if that's not your default mode, mm -hmm. you can just have a smaller period of time. So even if you start with five minutes, mm. right, and reflect, maybe you can journal, maybe you can do art project, do something that's just about you and, and doesn't require you to talk. Yeah, it's just very important. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, one of the things that um, I did when I was um, working, when I first started working at a Catholic campus, I, I'm, I don't have a Catholic background, so I wasn't familiar with some of the things, um, but they had a um, silent retreat center that um, employees had the opportunity to go to. So uh, immediately um, upon being hired, I took advantage of the opportunity and it was it was only two or three days but it was total silence um, we had our own rooms and you know and and I thought it was the most peaceful experience ever haven't done it since I think it's been about 14 years <laughs> um, and so I'm thinking gosh I got to get back to that because and, and so I, how hard is it to find places like that and, and is it accessible for people who don't have a lot of money yeah, there are places around there, even places here in, in Georgia. I usually go to uh, my favorite Spirit Rock in California. But places like Spirit Rock have a scholarship program. They even mm. have a people of color retreat where it's almost wow. free for people to, to attend. Wow. So there's a lot of different um, resources that people have or can use to do a silent retreat. Then, of course, the, the cheapest way would be to just decide to just be to silent go. <laughs> and is... go out in nature uh -huh. and just do that for yourself and do not let yourself speak. Uh, even when I was in Thailand, every Thursday we couldn't speak. Not even to yourself. Not, yeah. Oh, I talk so, to myself so much. <laughs> and it's interesting how you communicate because you're not supposed to look other people in their eyes, but to mm -hmm. say, hey, can you pass the spoon so I can get okay. some rice or whatever? Or can you do chores That's without speaking? And you realize you can. And it's fine. And you actually enjoy, you know, like watering plants or, mm -hmm. or washing dishes in a different way if you're not being distracted by talking. Interesting. The time. So it's not the communication that's the problem. I don't want to say the problem, but it, it's just the actual verbal. Yeah, because when we speak, we actually think about how we're going to sound to the other person. Mm. So we, formulate, <laughs> we formulate our words. All, all people do it, yeah. right? So yeah. you're taking a little bit of energy to make sure you appear a certain way, mm. right? So if you just let yourself be, and you won't have to actually worry about anyone else's judgment. So when someone's talking to you and you're listening, you have to focus on, let me listen. Let me be present. Mm -hmm. What do I think about this? No, let me not think about it because I'm listening, <laughs> right? So right. there are all these thoughts going on. So it allows you to relax more and not having to listen to anyone else. Well, Interesting. Yeah. Wow, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. <laughs> okay. I uh, just want to remind you all, give us a call, 678-613-5857. Really great information. Um, the reason why I'm asking these questions is because a lot of people I know are all about what why they can't do it why you know they, they immediately have a list of reasons I have kids I have this I have that I've got a job I can't take time off and they immediately go to the can't so I really want people to think about how they can yeah even in your car if you turn off the radio if you turn off the hands-free and you just drive mm -hmm. just drive and pay attention to the cars around you it's a completely different experience yeah. So that brushing your teeth without daydreaming, taking a shower Ooh. without daydreaming, these are simple things that everyone can do to start feeling the bliss of mindfulness, right? So you shut off the daydreaming by because I know somebody's going to ask, how do you shut off the daydreaming? And and I'm going to go back to what you said about like when you're walking, focusing on how your toes, right. you know, so showering maybe how the water hits yeah. your face. It's beautiful, all the little drops mm -hmm. of water and the streams and all that and the soap. So if you just focus on that, you're mm -hmm. in the present moment, hmm. right? 
I'm going to try that. <laughs> yeah, they're simple things. So if you start with small things like that, then you can expand it. Okay. Yeah. That is so neat. I love it. Um, so I, I, I was about to go into something else, but we're going to go ahead and, and take another break. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about what does finance have to do with any of this at all? <laughs> so stay tuned, and we're going to find out on the live exchange. <laughs> You want to see who's in the network? Well, don't be jealous, but I've been chatting online with Dave all day. Follow us on Instagram at Sensation Station Network. We're the nation's urban station. Radio, not dumbed down. Now we come to the special feature of our program. Sensation Station Network. All right, welcome to the live exchange. We are at the top of the second hour of the show. If you missed the first hour then you're going to have to go back and listen to the Facebook Live recording because this is some really good stuff. I have here with me today Dr. Roshana Novellis, and we are talking about mindfulness and yoga and finance and how in the world do all of those things go together. Well, we know how yoga and mindfulness go together, um, but we're going to talk uh, a lot about how these things um, work together to really have an enjoyable life because it's one thing to be wealthy and to have a lot of money, and it's quite another to, to have those things and still be at peace and still be happy with your life. So I am very excited about um, this talk. I'm even more excited about it than I was when I first heard about it. So <laughs> this is just because this conversation is, is really great. So I would love to hear, you know, how do you integrate finances with mindfulness? Great. So I have this five-point wealth multiplier system. So the first point is mindfulness, which we already discussed. Okay. And the second point is being honest with yourself. Mm. So once you're honest with yourself, you know what, goals you have, what things in your life are important. So say you're a musician and you love guitar lessons. So that guitar lessons might be part of your budget, whereas something like coffee or going to happy hour may not be in your budget. Uh, okay. So there's an honesty exercise that all of us have to take to figure out our ideal budget and how we should allocate our money. But this requires being present first and then being honest second, right? Mm. And when we're able to do this, we're able to eliminate a lot of the things in our lives that we do not need. So I have a close friend who was anti-debt. But she uh, got her MBA and had all of these student loans. And she said, what is the fastest way that I could pay off the student debt? So she decided to do something non-traditional for someone with an MBA. She decided to join the Navy. And after serving her four years in the Navy, all of her student debt was paid off, wow. free and clear. And everyone besides me, well, I'm <laughs> sure not, I wasn't the only one, didn't understand why she didn't just get a high-paying corporate job or do something in Wall Street. But she said, I don't want to have debt. This is my life. Hmm. This is, I don't like having this over my shoulder. I want to have a freer, unburdened life. Yeah. And she was able to make that decision because she knew who she was. And she used that self-awareness to decide on her financial path forward. So all of us yeah. can do that. Instead of comparing ourselves to other people, the Joneses, yeah. um, I want to do be like this person on TV or, or be like this person on our social media feed, <laughs> we could say, hey, what do I want in my life? Yeah. And then how can I mindfully get there? Yeah. So even when I decided to go to Thailand, I said, I'm going to have to figure out how to pay for it, right? And so I decided to use a service called Airbnb oh, yeah. and rent out my condo here in Atlanta. Yeah. And I rented it out at such a price that paid for my whole trip in oh, Thailand. So the net cost was zero. <laughs> but a lot of people say, hey, I'm just going to do this and go on a whim and don't put the financial piece. Oh, that's so, as part that's of the decision-making process, mm -hmm. and then they fall behind. Right. But I was able to take this trip for free and have my house taken care of. There's somebody there when a neighbor checked in every week, what? sending emails, and it was fine. And they right? stayed in your house. You had one person stay in the house for the entire time. Yes. Yes. So it was another person in Europe that was traveling for the states, and they come wow. every year. So there are a lot of people who do things like that. Mm -hmm. But I had to plan for that in advance and find, you know, like-minded, like-minded individual who wanted to do that, hmm. and it, and it worked out. So. 
so if smart. we want to go on this sabbatical, as I call it, to another country or go back to school or pay off debt or, or learn to play guitar, we just need to integrate being mindful with that desire with how we're going to finance it. This is a smart woman. <laughs> My gosh, a smart person. You know, just I'm amazed because nobody think I mean, no, I shouldn't say nobody. She clearly does. But but very few people think creatively about how to solve problems and, you know, and to really, uh, you know, for the lack of a better term right now, think outside of the box and just do things differently. Um, and, and that's one thing I have always been quite a risk taker, but I think you've kind of outdone me in the creativity realm right now. <laughs> that's just, that's really awesome. And, and that was going to be one of my questions is how, because, you know, I read Eat, Pray, Love shortly after my own divorce. And I'm thinking, and even, you know, I wrote a book after called Letters to the Brokenhearted, and I even wrote in there, not everybody can just up and go to India, Indonesia, and I can't remember the last country, yeah. and um, the way she did. But, I, you know, I, as I think about what you just said, and, you know, there are ways, and, you know, everybody isn't in a position to do it right now or the way she did it, but there is your own creative way right to do what you need to do right I have another friend who teaches kids in Brooklyn and she also has the same desire as I do to love to travel so she started applying for grants that were focused on taking kids from cities mm -hmm. who had never left and exposing them to the world so now every summer she gets to take a group of kids wow. from Brooklyn all over the place so I, I met her in Croatia a couple years ago That's or, amazing. so she you know as a teacher she couldn't you know fund it her herself but she said hey I'm smart mm -hmm. I have this um, background and perspective I'm gonna make this happen right. so you have to know what your goals are and what's important to you so that you can make your finances work that is amazing I mean use the tools that you have in your toolbox yes. you know we all have them they're not all the same tools right but what do you have um, to make what you need to have happen. Um, that And that reminds me of a theory, another one that I'm going to bring up later. But um, stay tuned. We have more great information for you on the live exchange. Enlightening your senses and stimulating your mind, body, and soul. You're listening to Sensation Station Network, the total body experience. Well, I finally did it. My student loan is totally paid off. What? What about our plan to win the lottery and start living? You know, travel the world on matching yachts, wear enough jewelry to require a bodyguard, vacation on the French Riviera, and then buy it. You know we're never going to win the lottery. Right? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs, the Georgia Society of CPAs, and the Ad Council. Great leaders aren't born. They're made. And not just anywhere. They're made in special places by special qualified trainers in places like the Academy of Creative Coaching. The Academy of Creative Coaching is an international certification program with courses in health and wellness coaching, spiritual coaching, relationship coaching, executive coaching, life coaching, and cultural competency coaching. Courses are online, hybrid, or face-to-face. -face. The Academy of Creative Coaching is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make a positive change in yourself and the world. Go to academyofcreativecoaching.com. I hate, hate religion. religion. Pretty shocking to hear coming from a pastor, huh? I'm Jasper. This is my wife, Alicia Williams. We would absolutely love to have you come and take a visit. At the church. We're strictly about relationships. It's about deepening your walk, walk with, with God. 4845 South Old Peachtree Road, Norcross, Georgia. Or you can hit us online at www.thechurchinfo.org. Remember, at the church, it's about relationship, not religion. <laughs> And so a new American industry has been born. Sensation Station Network. Get, 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 get ready. Like the best R&B and some hip hop. Primary electric. Lack of diversity. Gas prices. Michael Jackson. Trending topics. All right. Welcome back to the live exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela. And my goodness, there is so much going on in the world right now. Um, I know a lot of times when we do trending topics, we talk about what's happening with the celebrities and entertainment news. And um, But, you know, there is just so much happening in politics today alone. Um, that yeah, I just I've got to I've got to touch ba touch you know touch on that stuff. Um, so right now, as many of you may or may not have heard, um, the the Democrats uh, are actually engaged in a protest sit-in as we speak on the House floor, and 
regard, I mean, and despite that, you know, the, the, we're in response to that, the Republicans, in attempt to shut it down, pretty much took a, um, a break or a recess through July 5th. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of criticism about going into the holiday and everything with this still sitting on the table. And, and for those of you who don't know, um, I mean, my goodness, turn on the TV, but <laughs> um, there is a, it's, it's really about the lack of action with gun control. And um, the Democrats are, are ready for some kind of action to be taken. They're not saying that um, the Republicans have to agree with them or that they have to vote a certain di- uh, in a certain direction, but at least let's talk about it. At least let's debate this. Let's put something on the table and let's make a move on it. Um, and so that's pretty much what's going on right now. Um, I, I don't know if you have any thoughts. I can just keep talking. <laughs> so, so that is one of the, the, the biggest things that's going on right now. What's interesting is um, I, as I listen to the debates on both sides, uh, one of the things that happened right or one of the statements that was made right after the, the shooting in um, Orlando was that, you know, this whole issue really escalated once a group of kids got killed in, in Cincinnati or Connecticut, I'm sorry, and nothing was done then. So... How do we expect that anything is going to, if, if kids aren't even enough, according, yeah. you know, what does it take? Yeah, so. poli- politics doesn't include compassion for some reason. If, you know, 92% of the people in America want there to be some changes to gun control laws and background checks, but yet that's not reflected in Congress. I mean, yeah, that's just hard facts. Yeah. So... Well, what's interesting about facts and statistics and numbers is that they're both throwing them out yeah. <laughs> and their their statistics are opposing each other. But it's, you know, my thing is, I, that's the beauty, maybe not the beauty, that's the vice of, of, of statistics and numbers is, you know, we can tweak them to tell the story that we want it to tell. So I'm seeing that happen on both sides. I'm seeing that those who are opposed to any gun control laws are saying that there are statistics out there that are saying that because more guns are out there, crime has gone down. And then on the other side, you know, the the argument is, you know, no, crime is not going down and using their own set of statistics to um, argue that, which is so interesting. But at the end of the day, I totally agree with you. It's about compassion. It's about what is it going to take for people to be safer and it, it really comes down to that and really we're safe because most people don't want to harm others like that is the truth because there they're go. not police around us at all times yes, right so most right. people do not have a desire to hurt anyone else and hopefully that'll just grow yeah <laughs> yeah and i think you're right you know with 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 the media and the things that come out you know it it tends to heighten our fears about things that may not really um, be realistic. Right, right. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so I told you guys turn your TVs on. Don't turn your TV on. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and just, just, you know, be in the present. Don't worry about that. But, but no, but there, there is, um, just so much going on out there. And, um, one, another thing that just came out was, um, the Freddie Gray case, the, the police officer. So they're trying them separately. And so this, the police officer that was being tried or the decision that was made today is the one that was doing the driving the van. And, and, and I kind of thought this was going to be a hard case to prove anyway, but they were saying they were charged him with second degree murder saying that his, the way he drove, caused his neck to be injured and for that to, you know, cause his death. And I just thought, oh, that's going to be a tough one to prove. Um, And so apparently he was acquitted and that is something that they weren't able to, um, you know, prove. So I want to know who actually hit him or what, what, you know, who actually landed the punch or the blow or whatever that caused the, the, the break. Um, but I guess that's what everybody wants to know, right? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So that is, that's what's trending right now. Um, and, you know, it's not all great news right now. So this might be a really good time to turn the TV off, to just go do some reading, go do some walking, some meditating, or something that's going to kind of bring in a more positive vibe. Mm-hmm. And maybe this, these bad stories are what you need to be more positive and mm. to say, hey, am I adding to the fear of the chaos or I'm adding to the solution? I love and it. be part of the solution. Yes, yes. Be one of those people. I saw this on Facebook yesterday. Be one of those people that make other people think, wow, there really is good in the world. Yes. 
you know, that's. <laughs> so we're going to go to break, and uh, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about finances and yoga. Um, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back on the live exchange. Are you thinking about getting your GED diploma? Well, here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we've got a number of pep talks that can motivate you. Sometimes things don't always turn out the way you want them to. You know that feeling? People look at you and don't believe in you. You want some gentle encouragement. Then you're on your way to your GED diploma and a better life. But I know they're probably just a little bit nervous. You can find it in yourself to take that first step. You can improve your future. You can do this. I know you can. You need to start pushing yourself. Now get your game face on and take the first step towards a better life. Hurry up. Don't make me repeat myself. Whatever level of motivation you need to get your GED diploma, we've got a pep talk that's right for you. Call 1-877-38-YOUR-GED or visit yourged.org for your pep talk and find free GED classes in your area. GED is a registered trademark of the American Council on Education. Brought to you by Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Marie Kellenders knows that you may not have time to roll out dough for a perfectly flaky crust that's made from scratch. Or enough time to mix vegetables with all white meat chicken and a homemade gravy. She knows you may not have a moment to crimp the edges of your favorite chicken pot pie. But Marie Callender's does. And when she's done, all you need to do is find time to grab someone special. Sit down and save her. Marie Callender's, it's time to save Hello and welcome to today's lottery drawing. Good luck. And here's today's winning numbers. First one up, it's not yours. Second one, not yours. And another number that's not yours. Okay, this is one number that's yours. It's a five, but you don't get any money for that. And the final number is not yours. Yep, so chances are you're not going to hit the lottery anytime soon. Don't get us wrong. The lottery can be fun every now and then. Just please don't rely on it for your future savings. How about this? Brew your own coffee at home instead of buying that latte every day. Brown bag it to work instead of ordering in. Ride your bike instead of buying all that gas. These changes alone can save you thousands a year. Thousands. Small changes today, big bucks tomorrow. Feed that piggy bank. Go to feedthepig.org for more free ideas on how to save. Feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Great leaders aren't born. They're made, and not just anywhere. They're made in special places by special qualified trainers in places like the Academy of Creative Coaching. The Academy of Creative Coaching is an international certification program with courses in health and wellness coaching, spiritual coaching, relationship coaching, executive coaching, life coaching, and cultural competency coaching. Courses are online, hybrid, or face-to-face. -face. The Academy of Creative Coaching is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make a positive change in yourself and the world. Go to academyofcreativecoaching.com. Mom, Dad, guess what? Now you're always talking to me about not doing drugs like pot and ecstasy and cocaine, how they're dangerous and illegal. Well, you don't have to worry anymore. My friends and I have found a much better way to get high. And you'll be happy to know it's not even illegal. Nice, huh? Want to know what we're doing? All right, I'll tell you. We use cough medicine. Seriously, the stuff in the medicine cabinet? You didn't notice it was missing? <laughs> oh, well, I guess lucky for me then. Last year, more than two million teens risked blackouts, seizures, even comas, intentionally abusing ordinary cough medicine, the kind in virtually every home in America. Never heard of it? Bet your kids have. And it's got to be safe, because it's medicine, right? When you talk to your kids about drugs, make sure you start with the ones in the medicine cabinet. Need help getting the conversation started? Go to drugfree.org. A message from the Partnership for a Drug-Free America. Now no, now no, now no. Well, you'll see what happens. Sensation Station Network. In the interest of science. 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 Science, 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 science. All right, welcome back to the live exchange. And just to give you a little bit of science, um, I've... I'm working on a book, and it's um, it's called The Secret Life of an Obsessed <laughs> Entrepreneur. That might be, like, antithetical to the whole idea of mindfulness and 
piece, but the obsessed entrepreneur. Um, but really, the the word obsessed is um, is about purpose and, and really about being able to follow your purpose. And so, one of the frameworks that um, I've developed based on my research and um, some of the work that I've done with people is what I call the life methodology compass. And um, I'm um, a research methodologist at um, as my professor title is research methodologist. So wh what a methodologist does is um, we help people who are doing their research to figure out how to do the research. What what method are you going to use? Are you going to do interviews? Are you going to do surveys? You know, what's your method? So that translates a whole lot to what I do with regards to coaching and working with people outside of the university, well, even in the university, um, it, because students always come to you wanting to figure out their lives as well. So I've kind of coined the term life methodology with that idea, that same idea. How are you going to do it? You know what the problem is. You know what, um, where you want to be. The methodology is the how. So the, meth the life methodology compass, um, the reason why it's a compass is because authenticity is at the top. It's as the north. So no matter what it is that you're going to do, authenticity is really what you want to, you always know where that is. You always know who you are. You're always able to come back to this is who I am as a person, and I have to make sure that I'm true to that in, in no matter what decision I make. So at the top, we have authenticity, um, and then we have resilience, um, which would be equivalent to the East. And then the South is independence, and um, the West is energy. And authenticity, resilience, independence, and energy are, are sort of um, the fuel to getting to where it is that you need to go. Now, what's inside of the compass, um, right below authenticity, is purpose. So again, your purpose is going to be driven by who it is you really are, um, what you're intended to do. Um, purpose leads to um, being able to understand, well, I shouldn't say leads to, but um, really understanding your predicament and being able, and this is kind of in line with presence, but knowing the situation that you're in and fully understanding that is how you get to resolving that. Um, so you want to ask the right question. So question is the third thing. Um, so you've got the predicament, but what are the right questions to ask? And this is very similar to what I have students do with their research. Um, you know what the problem is, so what are the, 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 the research questions you're going to ask with, result, re, with regards to that? Once you understand the questions, um, you can develop a method after that. I, now I know, here's what I want to find out, here's what I need to do, um, and, and so I'm going to develop a method. And so it's kind of this cycle of purpose, predicament, question, method um, in terms of how you're going, the process that you're going to go through to get to where it is that you want to be. So I can put a visual up the, uh, of this for you, but it is the life methodology compass. Um, again, driven by authenticity, resilience, independence, and in, um, energy um, through a process of purpose, predicament, question, and method. You got all that? <laughs> So, so, I, so the research today is my research, um, at least in this segment. And um, if you want to know more about that, then you know my my book is coming out um, probably in 2017, um, and it's the Secret Life of an Obsessed Entrepreneur. But it really kind of um, helps people figure out um, who they are and to make sure they're on the path of, of really being that person. So. Can I ask you a question? About sure, it? sure. How does what the market wants interplay with the wheel? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, and, uh, you know, because if the market, if what the market wants conflicts with what your purpose and what your authentic, you know, your authentic being is, who it is you are meant to be, for me, I've kind of, I've had to select a different market, you know, and, I, and I, I'd love to hear your answer to that as well. Um, but I have shifted, I've been willing to shift to um, to the market that speaks more to who I am. Um, not to say that the market that, that has a different need, I can't do anything for them because obviously you want to still make that money. But if it's it, if it opposes what it is that I'm supposed to be doing, I find that, and I'm trying to appease them still, I find that I'm going against the grain and it's it's it, there's no peace in it for me. Um, so I'm curious to know. Yeah, what I'm agreed are. to look at authenticity and all your other attributes to determine where you should go in entrepreneurship. Also, you have to do the market research to yes. see if the pairing makes sense. Right. And there are many ways to do it, right? So with each option that you have for you, do the market research to, to, and, to, and see if that market wants you as your authentic self. And what if they don't? 
Well, if they don't, you might not be able to make money in that arena. Maybe yeah. it's something you volunteer at, right? Yeah, I mean, because so. I know a lot of people who will go against their authentic self to appease the market. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, so I'd be, I, I would love to, because to me, there's no peace there. Right. Um, so, we're, we're going to break? Nope. Okay, so we, <laughs> I just, I just want, I'm always like, ah, but, um, but what, what about those who, who go against their authentic self to appease a market that wants what they can give, but isn't necessarily in line with their own purpose? So sometimes we have to do that. Sometimes it's for temporary reasons. So like, mm -hmm. for instance, when you get out of college, you take a corporate job for the first couple for of years. For six months. <laughs> to, you know, build up your nest egg so that you could be your authentic self. So sometimes we have to make sacrifices mm -hmm. to get to our, to reach our goals. True. And they're not, you know, necessarily bad unless you are betraying your, like, ethical principles. Mm. So as long as you're not be betraying those, sometimes it's okay. But... You do make more money. You are more happy when you are authentic. That's great, and I, and I love that you did made the distinction between your ethical principles and you know and your authentic self. Um, I don't know if it's possible to have every point in your life from the moment you were born to the moment you are no longer on this earth um, to be authentic 100 percent right. of the time. <laughs> so, but it is good to try to strive towards you know your being true to your ethical self. Yes. Um, during that time here on earth so <laughs> all right we'll be right back uh, we have much more for you so stay tuned on the live exchange now we come to the special feature of our program Station, Station Network. i am an american soldier i'm a warrior and a member of a team i serve the people of the united states and live the army values I will never accept defeat. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined. I am disciplined. Physically and mentally tough. Trained and proficient in my warrior tasks and drills. I always maintain my arms, my equipment, and myself. I am an expert, and I am a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the, the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. I am an American soldier. They're strong, and there's Army strong. See what it takes at GoArmy.com. Great leaders aren't born. They're made, and not just anywhere. They're made in special places by special qualified trainers in places like the Academy of Creative Coaching. The Academy of Creative Coaching is an international certification program with courses in health and wellness coaching, spiritual coaching, relationship coaching, executive coaching, life coaching, and cultural competency coaching. Courses are online, hybrid, or face-to-face. -face. The Academy of Creative Coaching is empowering coaches to empower the world. Make a positive change in yourself and the world. Go to academyofcreativecoaching.com. I hate, hate religion. religion. Pretty shocking to hear coming from a pastor, huh? I'm Jasper. This is my wife, Alicia Williams. We would absolutely love to have you come and take a visit. At the church. We're strictly about relationships. It's about deepening your walk, walk with, with God. 4845 South Old Peachtree Road, Norcross, Georgia. Or you can hit us online at www.thechurchinfo.org. Remember, at the church, it's about relationship, not religion. You want to see who's in the network? Don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. Follow us on Instagram at Sensation Station Network. We're the nation's urban station. Radio, not dumb down. All right, welcome back to Live Exchange. I'm Dr. Pamela, and I see some of you have are still joining us on Facebook. Thank you. I see you there, Jennifer Glaze and Yvette Calzadilla. Um, Benita Ramsey, great to see you all there. I have today with me um, Dr. Roshana Novellis, and we're talking about mindfulness and finances. And I think you got, I think you got to w two points. We're, <laughs> I think you had six, and um, and so we kind of veered away. But we're going to come back to that. Um, one of the things that 
I, I've been intending to ask you is, you know, you told us about your worst entrepreneurial journey, and then you also told us about a um, trip that you took to Thailand. Was it six weeks? Yes. Yeah, so to really learn about, well, I, was it specifically to learn about mindfulness and, mm -hmm. okay. and, yoga, and yoga? Because I've always loved fitness, but it's been compartmentalized in my life. Okay. So I wanted to integrate it throughout my entire life, and I thought that going there for six weeks would teach me how. And okay. it did. <laughs> okay, great, great. So I would. So at what point in your entrepreneurial journey did you make these decisions? Because these are pretty big. They seem like milestone phases in, right. in life. So I've been a full-time entrepreneur since 2012. And 2012 was when the first entrepreneurial mistake happened. Okay. Because I transitioned from corporate America to being a full-time entrepreneur in Miami. And that's what happened, the story gotcha. that I shared earlier. And so you didn't run after that. I didn't run. <laughs> I said... I was kind of sad. I'm like, am I going to be a failure after only a couple of weeks? Oh. Or am I going to use the skill sets that I have to do something else? And yeah. that's the choice that I made. That's good. And so I went to Thailand in 2014. So that was two years into being a full-time entrepreneur. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So these were both kind of early on. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so how do you how have you evolved in the years since that? I mean, you've talked about lessons learned in both cases. Yeah. I, it. The goal of life is to not take everything so seriously. Mm -hmm. Everything is not going to go our way. Oh. And then when everything's <laughs> great, it's not going to stay that way. You know, oh. so once we get these great opportunities, um, you're not going to get them every single day of your life. So I've evolved in the way that I'm more grateful for mm -hmm. everything that I have. So even when I have bad days, the fact that I have people who are there who will listen to me or go running with me or go eat with me. I love eat yeah me too um so <laughs> the fact that i have a community and and i may not have been as grateful for that um, before right um so that's really the main uh, evolvement and being an entrepreneur you realize that life is full of ebbs and flows you might have to change your staff unexpectedly you, have, you might have to move out of office your biggest uh, client may leave you but that doesn't mean your life is over. It doesn't mean you are a horrible person. So being able to look at it and say, yeah, this kind of sucks, mm -hmm. but I'll figure it out. I'm still yeah. me. I still have my skill sets, and I know that I can figure out a path forward. So, What's the difference between the person who does that and the person who spirals downward because they lost their biggest client? So you have less anxiety, and it stays with you longer. Like, you can be sad for, let's say, a day or a week. You know, you can decide how long you're going to be sad. <laughs> but for people who stay on the couch for months, and it's over, it's, it's the past. Yeah. So it doesn't mean you don't let yourself grieving time, let yourself have grieving time, but it's like you know that it's not going to stay that way forever, and you have to move on. You have to get that next client. Right. So now it doesn't phase me when I have um, client discovery meetings and the person decides um, not to work with me. I'm like, well, someone else will. It doesn't. I don't. <laughs> I'm not affected at all emotionally, whereas yeah. when I started my business, I was. I'm like, why not? What did I say? About <laughs> and of course, you want to modify what you say, your delivery, and, and, and be better, uh -huh. but you don't have to take it to heart. Well, and that, that reminds me kind of of the question you asked if, yeah. if what, you know, if, if what the market wants doesn't necessarily match who you are, you know, sometimes people will modify their, the way they communicate, not necessarily for the better, but to, to, uh, meet the needs of a particular client or something right. like that. And you have to decide, um, what's best for you. So I personally had the opportunity to star in three different TV shows this year, but they wanted someone who had a lot more drama or who wanted oh. them to fight and, you know, <laughs> think, do activities that are outside my character. And mm -hmm. I just, just said, I decided that that wasn't important to me. It wasn't important yeah. to me just to be on TV if I had to act a way that wasn't in alignment with who I am. So right. I turned those opportunities down. Yeah. So yeah. that's sometimes we have to say no. Yeah. Sometimes we can't do everything. Right. So absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, because you're advertising yourself. <laughs> right. And, you know, just, but uh, yeah. And you will get clients. Are those the clients that are going to match? Right. You know, when you get your clients being not yourself. Right. You either have to maintain that person that's not yourself. Right. Or you transition back to the person that you really are, and then those clients. Will leave you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and then even that the one story, one of my uh, major clients, he said, "Yeah, if you would have gone on that TV show, I would have left you." Mm, so you have wow. to care for your current client base, your current image, and then make sure everything's consistent. So yeah. might as well be authentic. Yeah, you might as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's the easiest way to go. <laughs> it is. 
is. It is, you know, and it's interesting because to me it seems like that's the easiest way to go. Um, but again, I think that when you have a hard time accepting who you truly are, the, wearing the veil becomes the norm. It becomes, you know, and, and some people don't even like to take the veil off at home. They can't right. stand to see them out, their own selves when they're alone. And one thing I had to learn was that just because I'm being authentic doesn't mean other people will get me. <laughs> oh and that's gosh. okay. I've learned that too. <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. Yes. Like so I'm flower child sometimes. Other times I'm like the stiletto girl. And I love both. Those are both parts of me. Yeah. And then I'm the yogi. Right. So people will see me in all different outfits. Oh my gosh. And they're so like, nice. which one is really you? I'm like, they all are parts of me. Yeah. Because I'm a multifaceted person. And, right. and that's, that's me. I love it. So. Yeah, that's so, I mean, and me, I'm, I'm like jeans and hat sometimes. I'm stiletto sometimes. Yeah. I'm, I mean, but it, you're right. You yeah. know, it's, it, they're all different parts of you. And it's important to realize that you have these different parts. Yes. You know, and if I were to uh, try something that maybe just didn't work for me, then, you know, I can adjust. But I know myself well enough to know, you know, what works, what doesn't. And, and to be forgiving of yourself when right. you try something that doesn't work. Right. You know. So, yeah, interesting. Well, I, you know, and I love I, that we have to go to break. And so